Here comes the guy in the wheelchair. Showing it off. But it's cool. It's cool. Huh? Well, I'm introducing John. He's going to go. Yeah, we do. It's in the bowl. He's in the bowl. Good evening to everyone and welcome to our midweek Bible service or Bible study. We have a guest speaker this evening and it's my pleasure to introduce John Galloway. John and his wife Arlene are with us tonight. They've been working in various uh, Scottish congregations since 1985. They started with the East Kilbride Church of Christ where they're located now in 2007. And East Kilbride is a mission point for Willow Avenue. And we've been work supporting that work about as long as I can remember. Uh, John is the son of an evangelist. He spent his younger years in a variety of places, including uh, several states. He's lived over in Europe and Finland for a period of time. He graduated high school from uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia, and began preaching while at the uh, Fried Hardeman College. Um, and it was there that he met his future bride. They have three children and six grandchildren. Now, you could say that somebody that lives and has lived in Finland and lives in Scotland and been in Parkersburg, that they're sort of, they're a Renaissance person. Uh, but I, I have to tell you, John has certainly embraced the Scottish culture. I, I understand that he loves butterscotch pie, uh, scotch tape, scotch pines, and my favorite, Scotch Guard, John Galloway. Be here. It's been four years since we've been able to be in the United States. So we're, it's good for us to get back, take the back. Four years since we've been able to visit here. We've made a couple trips back, but that was for funerals. Uh, but uh, other than that, we've not been able to, to get here because of COVID restrictions. So I was trying to put this together. I was thinking, what do I need to talk about? It's been since 2018, since we were here. So I thought I need to talk about family because we had losses, we've had gains. So I usually leave that for last, but I'm going to start with that tonight. Um, and we're going to talk a bit about well, how the pandemic affected us in Scotland. And then we're also going to talk about a merger that has taken place between uh, the East Kilbride congregation and the other congregation uh, that, that was in town. And then we'll end up talking about some of my work with the British Bible School. And I forgot to ask John how long I roughly have. <laughs> well, it's okay. I'll go until he tells me to shut up. Uh, okay, I think I've got that. I think I've got that. But it'll, it'll be close enough anyway. So, if there's any time, if I finish quickly, depends on how quickly I speak, and you have questions, by all means, we'll do that. And if I go over, and that's usually what I do, uh, then if you have any questions, ask us afterwards, and we're happy to answer any questions I don't cover and what we're going to look at tonight. So we'll begin by looking a bit at our family. We've, as I mentioned, we've had loss, gains and we've had losses. Start with the losses. These were my parents, Joe and Barbara Galloway. I don't know if you knew my dad. I know Angie does. Um, you knew him. But uh, dad and mom uh, worked in really the West Virginia area and then down into East Tennessee, ended up in their later life in Florence, Alabama. And my dad uh, died in 2018 just after we, were, we visited here. Uh, he died on Christmas Eve, and we came back in January 2019 to, to do that funeral. And so we lost him. He had quite severe dementia at the end and Parkinson's disease. And then my mother uh, continued living there in Florence, but she died uh, in 2020. Uh, so it's been about uh, going on, on two years now. Uh, it's, I must admit, it's different flying over here knowing that your parents aren't here. I mean, every other trip, we'd always meet the parents, but this time, obviously, we couldn't do that. Uh, my mother died during the pandemic. She did not die of COVID. She did not have COVID at all. But uh, she, uh, I'm not sure that, that the lockdowns and all of that helped her any because she was obviously living alone and uh, that 
being isolated. My sister lives in town as well, but my sister has no immune system. She's a transplant recipient, so she couldn't mix with anybody during that time period. And so, uh, but mom, mom ended up with, just had some minor surgery in July, just to correct a slight problem, uh, heart ablation or something. And when they, she woke up, uh, she had very severe dementia. Um, just from that, she always struggled with surgery of any kind. Just coming out was not good. And so she died in September of 2020. We actually had the funeral in December of 2021. Uh, I told my siblings to go ahead. My parents both wanted to be cremated, and they were. And so um, my sister kept the ashes until she said, no, we'll wait till you get over here. So I came, came over in December as soon as restrictions lifted enough for us to get over. And um, I conducted that service up in Parkersburg. Uh, Arlene also lost her dad during the pandemic. Uh, nobody would have known him, but I'll mention that anyway. Arlene's dad uh, did get COVID-19, got it, was one of the very first to get it just after it had been identified in March of 2020, and he died in April. And I did that funeral at the end of April. But we did manage, this was in October, um, October or no, November of 2019, uh, we got a four generations picture with him. And so that's uh, Arlene's dad, and of course Arlene, uh, my wife, my uh, younger son, Scott, he was with us when we were here last time. So some of you may remember him. And that's his oldest son, Joseph, uh, named after my dad. And so uh, we'll get to him in just a minute as well. But uh, so that was the losses. And so when you have those losses, it does affect you a bit, especially when you suddenly realize your parents are all gone. And it's just you now. And so uh, I guess you say the buck stops here. But it's one of those things that when you... Arlene, I was, was talking about this. As we've lost parents, we've also gained grandchildren. Because when I was here last time, we had no grandchildren born to us at all. And so they've come in droves. So I'll introduce you to them very quickly. They've radically affected my life. But this is Joseph Dallas Galloway. Uh, he was born on 13th of October of 2019. And uh, he's doing very well. But my, uh, Scott said that I beamed for months. Uh, after having my first grandson. This is Joe just a couple of weeks ago. So he's now an active two-and-a-half-year-old and, -year -old and uh, joys to come coming to visit Grandpa and Gran. Uh, it was uh, during May of 2020 that uh, our second grandson was born. And this he has a great name, at least I think he does, uh, Jonathan David Galloway III, uh, named after his dad, named after me. So that's not too bad. Uh, but uh, to distinguish him from, um, from the rest of us, uh, we call him Jay. I'm John, David's David, and he's Jay. And so we all have the same name, but we all have different names. So that works out well. We didn't get to meet him until December 2021. So he was a, a year and a half old before we got to meet him. And so that was a picture from Christmas last year when we came over to do mom's funeral and to meet him. A year later... They kept coming. This is our daughter, Bethany. That's Demetrius. And uh, they had a son born in May of 2021. In fact, he just turned one-year-old. Elliot Odysseus Sloparis. You can probably tell his dad is not English. Uh, he's Greek. Uh, he's from Athens. And so uh, they like the name Elliot, but Odysseus is a family name. And the Sloparis, of course, uh, the last name. And so Elliot is uh, just a lovely young man. Uh, just turned one. He enjoys playing with Grandpa when Grandpa goes down and see him. So we enjoy uh, spending some time with Elliot. And then uh, Joe has a brother now. Uh, two weeks after Elliot was born, Benjamin Patrick Nicholas Galloway. Boy, teaching him to say that one's going to be something. But Benjamin Patrick Nicholas Galloway was born on the 20th of May, 2021. So his first birthday is just coming up. And if you're being very observant, you will have noticed that's also Jay's birthday. So uh, only he's a year older. So uh, Ben's doing really well. He, too, enjoys coming to overnight stays with his grandparents. So we enjoy having Ben around as well. So our life radically changed. And then there was one more that showed up. This is Milo Reed Galloway. Uh, he was born this past March. 
we've got, we've got to hold him as a baby. So we have really enjoyed that in the first part of our trip over. And uh, he joined, of course, Piper, who is a, uh, ours by through David's marriage, and of course, um, uh, Jay as well. Piper is 12 years old. Uh, she desperately wants to be a Galloway. And so we're, we're all for that. But uh, when she's introduced, she's introduced by her last name, but she says, I prefer Piper Galloway. <laughs> so that's what she goes by. So I think at some point she will do an official changeover. Uh, with the loss of parents, we also discovered you get something called inheritance. It's not something you really think about. So we decided to take our inheritance and put it into a house. So we have purchased a house still in South Lanarkshire, just the same area that East Cobrides in, a bit further out in the country. This was the house the first time we saw it, and uh, we looked through it, and a week later we agreed to buy it, and this is what the house looked like just before we left. And so we, we've got a, we're, it's sort of, we're in a small village, a village called Netherburn. Uh, nobody knows where it is, including the Scots who live in the area, because it's small. But there's about 800, 850 people that live in Netherburn. We're on a building, a housing estate that's being built right now. It's about four or five more houses due to be finished over the next few months. And then that'll be finished. So we're enjoying living a bit further out in the country where we drive past sheep every time we drive. And we, when I'm going out walking, I see deer and I see foxes and I see all sorts of wildlife. So I have really enjoyed being out there. The pandemic. Pandemic hit us just as well as it, I guess it hit the whole world. Uh, and it caused things to change quite uh, radically. Uh, the first Sunday, just when the things were starting to, to, to uh, I was going to say heat up, I guess they weren't really heating up, but anyway, it's getting worse. Uh, we were told to socially distance, but where there's no restrictions yet. They're still trying to work their way through what to do. So this was our worship service. Uh, during uh, in middle of March of 2020, we were socially distanced. We didn't have that many people there because a lot of our elderly people were in what's called the, uh, the shielded category, and so they were told not to venture out for 12 weeks. They didn't know it was going to be several months, but anyway, not to venture out. So we had a worship service. Uh, had some some visitors come as well, but we were able to socially distance without any problem and do that. Uh, of course, a week after that, on the Tuesday after that, we were suddenly into lockdown. That lockdown lasted from March, uh, at least as far as worship goes, March until July before we could worship again. We could start mixing with a few people uh, sort of the, during May and June, but it was July before that. So I learned to, to bake communion bread. I cook, by the way. I learned to bake communion bread, juiced my own grape juice, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, we did not have a live broadcast ourselves at the time. I worked at the British Bible School, which I'll tell you more about. And what we started doing was a Sunday morning message from the British Bible School and encouraged people to, to, to tune into that. So we encouraged the East Kilbride congregation. I know you all use YouTube Live. Apparently, I'm on YouTube Live right now. But uh, you've got the little chat window, and so... We'd all chat, you know, type notes backwards and forwards to each other uh, b b before the lesson started. And so that worked out well. Then we'd all break bread in our homes. And that's what we did during lockdown. And it worked out pretty well. I never had COVID-19, but we were asked, uh, we we're part of the UK Biobank. Occasionally you hear them in studies, but we're part of that, along with us several, probably had many thousands more people. But we were asked to do a... Um, antibody test for them to see if, if we would had COVID. And so uh, we did it. Mine's at the top there. If you can see, there's one good line, which means nah, I never had it. And then the bottom one there was Arlene's. And she had two lines. And so we didn't know that she had necessarily had COVID. Uh, we knew she had been sick, but we did not know. I mean, she'd gotten uh, ill, but this was back before they did testing, unless she went in the hospital and so she was not that, that sick, and so we, we just followed the rules and socially distanced as much as we could, and, and I cook anyway, so and she was fine. She had food to eat, and uh, I never got it, but she did, and she did a follow-up test uh, with them as well uh, to see if it would, that was through the vaccine or through the, the actually having it. It was through actually having it, 
and so she she had it as well. Uh, so, uh, but we, the congregation itself survived well. We've lost nobody to COVID, and I hope it continues that way. Uh, we did have we've had a, probably over half the con probably three quarters of the congregation get it, most of it within the last couple months, because uh, when the Omicron variant hit the UK. Uh, really has uh, gone through people. I still managed to miss it. So I, I don't, really don't want it, but uh, that's the way it is. As we're coming out of uh, being able to worship, one thing that they were emphasizing is don't, you're not going to be able to sing. Okay, so what are we going to do? We can't sing. And so um, I figured out very quickly. You can see Ian Cameron there on the left of your screen. Uh, Ian Cameron is a British Sign Language interpreter. I thought, well, let's sing in sign. Nobody can stop us from singing in sign, so uh, we decided to sing in sign. And so Ian's been teaching us songs in British Sign Language uh, since uh, July of 2020. Uh, um, so we've got a dozen and a half songs we can sing all four verses on now uh, in British Sign Language. It usually gives us a quick review on a few words that we forget. And he's not been, uh, not been able to be with us lately. And I've had to do the, the song reading in British Sign. And it's been interesting. We can sing now, by the way. Uh, once we could sing a, again, the congregation asked, can we continue singing a song in British Sign Language? That we've learned all these words. And who knows, we may be able to put them to good use. We're hoping, obviously, to come into contact with some deaf people. So um, we've continued learning a song. Uh, every week and s singing through a song in British Sign Language every week. So that worked out well for us. Uh, a lot of people, let me say one more thing about our worship uh, during COVID. Get back to that slide there. Uh, had to figure out how to do the Lord's Supper as well because that's uh, that was different. Not supposed to pass trays. Uh, so we don't didn't have access to the nice little things you have over here at the time. And so Gina Cameron, Ian's wife, uh, bakes our communion bread for us. And I said to Gina, can you bake bite-sized pieces? Um, so we don't have to break it, just bake bite-sized pieces. And so we put it in a, in a, a uh, plate and spaced them out so you could get one without touching the rest. And of course, individual cups is no problem anyway. And so we just have people go up by rows to the uh, Lord's table, get what they need, and sit down. And so that's, that's worked out well for us. Uh, so it's it's doing well. well. I've had people say, yeah, the lockdown was terrible. No no outreach, no evangelism going on. Well, I tell you, our baptistry was busy. Not necessarily people that we were teaching, but we did have one. But uh, others were, were still teaching. See, the lockdown did not lock down God's word. And I'm very thankful for that because I had studies with people. Uh, people phoned me, said, God, I'd like to study. Phone them back, study. I mean, there's lots of ways we can study. Uh, this is uh, Mark Wilson baptizing Caitlin. Uh, they're from the Hyvitz Bank Congregation in Edinburgh. Their building was shut. Their baptistry was empty. They knew our, our building was open, and our baptistry was full. Cold water, mind you, but it was full. And so they came up in uh, June of 2020. A uh, nice thing is next month, Mark and Caitlin are getting married in our building. So we're looking forward to that. The congregation in Glasgow used our baptistry at least three times during the, the pandemic, so we're pleased with that. There's a lot of good happening. And then we uh, used it in October of 2021. Rachel Fenton there in the picture uh, is dating uh, Chris Smith, who's in the back there. That's Adrian Smith in the front in the yellow. Uh, but Rachel uh, was wanting to study the Bible. This is during the pandemic. So Arlene ended up setting up a study with her, Eve. Adrian's wife, Chris's mother, was involved in that study. is on Zoom. And um, in October, she said she decided she really wanted to become a Christian. So arranged for her to be baptized. She's not a small woman. And so um, I felt she wanted Chris to do it, but it felt best to have Adrian there as well to make sure she got back out. And so all that worked out well. So uh, a lot of good things happened as far as teaching people, even during the pandemic. And we even had a wedding in the building. Uh, this was uh, Daniel and Jessica Chapman. Um, she wasn't Chapman at the time, but she is now. But uh, as you can see, that was the everybody who was allowed to attend that wedding. You're looking at right there. Of course, you can ask, how did I take that picture? 
So I was not allowed to be there, but I was unofficially not there. But uh, uh, somebody had to open the building, and I figured, well, I'm there. I might as well take some pictures. But uh, so we were able to, to do a, a wedding in the building as well. During just before lockdown in March of 2020, Alec Gear, who's standing at the podium there, contacted me and said, I have something I want to talk to you about. And he said, can we meet for coffee? Well, that's, that's the magic word. So yes, we got together, Starbucks uh, for, for coffee, and he said, situation in East Cobrata, he said, I've been thinking about it a lot, it's not good. And he's right, it wasn't good. Uh, two congregations, largely a result of a split, um, and there's problems on bo both sides of that. He said, we really need to get both groups back together. He said, that's, that's what, he said, I'm confident that's what the Lord wants. And he says, that's the best future that we both have in East Kilbride. And I totally agreed with him. I've been thinking the exact same thing. So uh, we uh, decided that we would uh, talk to our respective congregations. And, um, of course, then we got locked down. So I couldn't talk. I didn't want to do this over Zoom or over the telephone. I wanted to sit down with the men face-to-face and, and discuss this. And so uh, we had to wait till September to have that discussion. And so in September, I presented it to our men. They were all for it, said this should have happened a long time ago. Um, there were some problems that needed to be worked through, and they were worked through without any problem. And so uh, we decided then, uh, both congregations, unanimous, let's do this, and that uh, we would, the merger would be official the second Sunday in January of 2021. And then the Delta variant hit in December. And by that point, we couldn't, even for Christmas, you could only be with one family. You couldn't cross the border into England. And uh, just after Christmas, I think we met the first Sunday in January. And then we went into lockdown for, for one, two, three months. And so uh, did it happen. And so uh, Alec and I talked and said, well, the first Sunday back from lockdown, we're going to merge. And so we did. And it was the first Sunday in, or the last Sunday in March of 2021 that the merger went through. And so we're enjoying having more people around. Uh, enjoying, I'm enjoying having a coworker again. I had not had one for a long time. And so that's, that's been good. And it's been, I think it's been good for both groups. And we're working very well together. It's been very, very harmonious. Ideally, the first thing we would have done that Sunday is have a potluck meal and eat together, because what better way to say we're together than to eat? Of course, we couldn't do that because of the pandemic. And so we w it wasn't until August that we were able to have a, uh, uh, a barbecue outside. <laughs> and so that was uh, the first time we've eaten together. So far, the only time we've been able to eat together. But now that we now have all restrictions lifted, uh, and so we're able to start doing potlucks and things like that again. So we're looking forward to doing that. We have been able to have a number of guest speakers um, come as well. Uh, I, when I was working by myself, I'd use a guest speaker every two or three months just to give everybody else a break from listening to me. And, uh, but we still use a guest speaker periodically because it does help in the relationship between the, our sister congregations. You can't see him well in this picture, I know, but that's Nick Wilson back there in the pulpit or in the, the pulpit behind, uh, speaking to us. Uh, Nick speaks for us every year. He's Mark's father. Mark was the one baptizing Caitlin. But Nick's been a, a friend of mine for, for many, many, many years. And he's a really good speaker. By profession, he works in, um, uh, my mind blanked on it, Lo logistics, yes. Um, but uh, he's, a, one thing we find in Scotland and in England is a, if, a, if somebody can speak, they do speak. And so they may have another job, but they will, they will speak. And he's a, a frequent speaker at his home congregation as well. And we've also, uh, just recently, we had Colin Hind. thought I'd include his picture. Colin used to be my, my co-worker when I worked in Clyde Bank. And uh, he's now working with the Clarkston congregation. But we're able to do that, and it's able to keep uh, good relations and also a good encouragement to us. Just to show where we are, uh, just over 2018 to 2022. Uh, this is the number of Christians at East Cobride. As you can see, it was just uh, staying reasonably steady, increased slightly to 2019, dropped a bit into 2020. We didn't lose any during the pandemic, so 2021 was the same. 
But you notice in 2022, of course, with the merger, we have gone up by 20. So we're about 44 Christians today at East Kilbride. Uh, this is the congregation by ages. The two on your left are our children and one young teen. They are not Christians yet, but I thought I'd include them there. So not a lot in that age group. Notice there's no 20s. And then there's 30s, and then a little bit of 40s, and 50s, and quite a few of us in the 60s. So we are still a bit of an aging congregation. and We realize that means we've got a lot of work to do. Um, we've lost a lot of young people, as you can see, that should be in their 20s now. And they've, um, I think that's something that's happening many places, but something that we're trying to obviously find people that we can study with and that will become Christians that would be, in fact, in any age group. Uh, this is our attendance. And again, you can see it, um, it sort of went down during the pandemic in 2020. Uh, a lot of people were shielded and never were able to come back out. 2021 with the merger, it increased quite a bit. As you can see, it's already increased quite a bit in 2022. And that's because a lot more people who were in that shielded category are now coming out. And every few weeks, we get another family back with us. And so that's been good. So we are, we're averaging somewhere in the low, low 30s right now uh, in attendance. We're hoping to see that upwards towards 40 once everybody gets back. So we're look, looking forward to that. Uh, before I get to the British Bible School, let me just say, um, we do have Zoom now. We do Zoom our, our uh, um, uh, little, I'll get out in a minute, Sunday meetings. Uh, West Main's the other congregation was using Zoom, so we're now using it as well for our, 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 our services on Sunday. And it's, it's going well. Uh, we've got one thing that's been an advantage to us is we have people who are, they identify as being part of the congregation, but they live a ways away. Uh, I have a lady that lives up in the southern part of the highlands. Uh, so it's a, uh, driving down would be a couple hours both ways. And so she doesn't get down very often, but she loved it when we had, not that we have Zoom, because she can tune in on Sundays and be with us. I always try to go over and talk to everybody who's on Zoom. When I, we got back from the States in December, uh, Alec and Gillian picked us up at the airport, and Alec says, by the way, there's going to be a baptism today. I said, great. I said, who is it? See, he said, it's one of Gillian's, his wife's cousins. I said, okay, good, good. And uh, she'd apparently been up visiting over the holidays, and uh, when she, they studied the Bible and she decided she wanted to become a Christian, she lives in the south of England, and there's no congregation anywhere near her. And so she logs in every Sunday to our worship. And so at least we're able to have some contact with her. And so the Zoom has, has worked out well, live broadcasting uh, the, this, the, our worship as, as you all do. Is something that we found to be a good advantage. Uh, I can also work with, with the British Bible School. I've been doing that since 1991. Uh, I was initially what they called a visiting teacher, which means I'd go down for a week and teach uh, a whole course during a week. And my initial course was uh, Christian ethics, and then I started doing creation versus evolution, and uh, it expanded from there into other other courses as well. Uh, I've become very involved with the school. Uh, 2007, though, we had to shut down our residential program. Uh, we were down to three students. None of them were British. Uh, they, were, they were from uh, European countries, which is nothing wrong with that. But uh, government cracked down because of uh, terrorist activities and whatnot in order to, be a, to have foreign students. You have to have go through an accreditation process, and we were not in a position to do that. So we decided, really, we want to be the British Bible School, not that we don't like others coming along as well. And so we decided what we would do, it, was that you? Was that a bell? No, somebody's phone. Okay. I thought, wow. So what we, what we decided to do was go into a distance learning program. And so we offer our courses through distance learning. We also will go into congregations uh, two weekends, usually about a month apart, and teach an entire course during those weekends. And so we've been doing that 
uh, for a number of years now, and that is going well. Uh, of course, with the pandemic, then we had a challenge. What are we going to do? And so with the pandemic, um, Patrick Boynes there is, is our director, and he said, well, people can't get to have Bible classes, can't do anything. Let's just start offering a Bible class every day. And it doesn't matter if we get a dozen, that's great. But if people can't study, and that, they're, that way they can do something. So we, we had Bible classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and some days too. Um, and we all taught some during that first session. So uh, it's what's going up on screen are the various things that I taught. Uh, we, after the first session, uh, just coming back into worship and uh, decided that, uh, yeah, it would be good to, um, uh, to continue this. We cut down a bit because people were getting back to work and so whatnot. But then those who were attending the classes said to us, listen, even when the, all this is over, can you keep doing it? Because a lot of people, either because of their work or because of where they live, and they live a distance from the congregation they attend, they can't get to a midweek Bible study. And so we are still continuing to have classes and will for the foreseeable future. Uh, every Monday and every Thursday evening, 8 o'clock our time, that is 2 p.m. your time. Uh, if you want to, to join us, you're more than welcome. We have Americans that come in. Uh, you can find our details at BritishBibleSchool.com. And we teach classes, an hour-long class. And so that's done well. It's done the school well because we have a lot more financial supporters now as a result because a lot of people are now supporting the school who attend those classes. But Patrick, after doing that for a year, said, you know, why don't we offer our curriculum online? You know, we should have been doing that a long time ago. But why don't we offer our curriculum online where people can do our, our regular classes, which are two hours long, for over, over 12 weeks, and write the papers and take the tests and do the assignments. And uh, so we started doing that in January of 2021. And we've offered, um, we offer three of our modules uh, every, uh, every year now in, the, in that particular format. And we've gone from when we had a residential program having about three students, we now have probably close to 100 students who study with us at least one course, maybe two or three, every year. And so that's, that's doing well. So we're, we're pleased with that. That is a bell. I recognize that one. So, uh, uh, but, uh, so what we were doing that now as well. And again, people from all over the world are actually attending these. We've got people up in Washington State and uh, people in, in several other places as well that are uh, being in, involved in those, those classes. Just very quickly to wrap up, because I did have a bell. British Bible School also uh, has retreats. We try to get Christians together for fellowship. And the, we were able to have our first retreat in September last year. That is me uh, teaching at Letton Hall in Norfolk down in England. We also have a, um, one up in uh, the, the, the Lake District as well. We also offer a residential course every year at Bassenfeld Manor in the Lake District. This was our teachers in class this past November. And we go in for a week, and we study a whole module in a week. Then they've got time to do their, uh, their assignments afterwards. This is Mark Hill uh, teaching his part. We taught Acts there. And I was told us to include this slide as well. I also teach a class for the Livingston Congregation, uh, usually one quarter a year. Uh, Livingston Congregation is over in, in Edinburgh. Started doing that about 11 years ago and enjoy the fellowship with them, and they seem to enjoy having a different teacher. And so uh, this is the first time I did it online. Every other time it's been in person. But uh, so I, I do some work with Livingston as well. I'm also one of the editors of the Christian Worker magazine. It's the primary news magazine amongst the congregations in the UK. Trevor Williams is our uh, editor-in-chief. And so he's uh, uh, doing well. And I, I'm the one. He, he approves everything that goes in and sends it to me and I put it in. And so I'm responsible for what it looks like. Uh, but the Christian worker, through the Christian worker, we've managed to raise over 100,000 pounds for the refugees from the Ukraine. And we have a number of Ukrainians now living uh, amongst Christians in the UK, those from the congregations in the UK, uh, in Ukraine, living with Christians in the UK. Just to wrap up uh, our needs, keep us in your prayers. 
And I, we can't underestimate the value of prayer. So keep, keep us in the work that we're trying to do in Scotland in, in your prayers. We are over here looking for additional support, but you all already support us, and we're very, very thankful for that support. But we did lose two congregation support plus a few individuals during the pandemic. Uh, that's what happens when things depressed a bit. It looks like we're picking up a lot of that uh, that we've lost. We've had a, a few extra meetings um, this trip, so we're hoping that continues. We are also looking for additional workers to come work with us. Alec is due to retire next year. He says he'll still be around to help preaching and teaching, but he's going to me. He's well, he'll be 68 years old, and uh, of course I'm not as young as I once was, but I am hoping to have eight more years. But at some point, we're going to need to figure out what, we're, what the future is going to look like, whether we replace us with somebody else. So uh, I always mention maybe somebody in some audience is going to say, hey, I'd like to go work in Scotland for 5 to 10 years, 20 years. Mine's been 37. So uh, uh, we'd love to have you. But, and we always say, come visit us. If you get a chance, come over to Scotland. It's a nice country. It's cooler than here. It's a lot cooler than here. Tomorrow is supposed to be 54 degrees. Uh, so, yeah, it's cool right now. Uh, in the summer, we do get up to the 60s, occasionally the 70s, and usually once a year in the 80s. And the, the year it hits the 80s, you think you're going to die. But uh, it just barely scrapes into 80, and that's it. But if you do ever get a chance, do come visit us. Uh, do let us know in advance so that nobody else is using our spare bedrooms. But you're more than welcome to come. How much more time do we have, John? I'm good. That means I should sit down and shut up. Okay. I'm good at that. If you have any questions, see me afterwards. See Arlene afterwards. You want to hear someone that really talks with a Scottish accent. Talk to her, not to me. I'm originally from West Virginia, so that doesn't help a lot. But uh, you know, feel, feel free to talk to us at the end. It's good to be here. It's always lovely to see you guys.
we sing number 984. We bow down, verses 1 and 2. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all lords you will be. We bow Song will be number seven fourteen. <laughs> to the Christians in Rome, as he's beginning that letter, we're in chapter one. He says down verse fourteen, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Thus I am eager also to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous by faith will live. Power. The gospel has power. Sometimes I think we forget the power that's in God's Word. It's the power to change lives. It's interesting how Paul talks there about how he felt about going to Rome. We would put it this way, I need to go. See, he says, I'm debtor to everybody, to the Greeks and to the barbarians, to the wise and foolish. It pretty well includes everybody. I need to go and tell them about Jesus. Of course, the word gospel, literally. In the Greek, we translate literally, it's good news. And that's what the gospel is. It's the good news of Jesus. That Jesus came to the earth, that he lived as a human. Paul talked about that in Philippians chapter 2. Lived, you couldn't identify him by looking at him from anybody else. He was human, but he was still God. And he died for us. He died on the cross. And then, of course, he didn't stay dead. He rose again. That's why he paid the price for our sins so we can be forgiven. That's why we need to respond to what he's done. He's died to get rid of our sin. He didn't have any, and he died to do that. And that's why Paul can say, I am not ashamed of the gospel. That's God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. doesn't matter who you are. They classify people as Jews and, and Gentiles, Jews and Greeks, and they use them both there. It's everybody. No matter whether you're in Scotland or if you're here in Tennessee, you become a Christian the same way. It doesn't matter if you are rich or you're poor, you become a Christian the same way. In many ways, this is the great equalizer. We all do it the same way. And it's simple, isn't it? Just simply being immersed in water. And when you come up, your sins are forgiven. You get a new life. We're going to sing the song that's been selected. And if you need to become a Christian tonight, we'd encourage you to do that. Best thing you could do with your life. If you have any other need of, of coming forward, we ask you to do that as well. If you would, come as we stand and sing. When we walk with the Lord in the
Good evening. We'd like to welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. If you're visiting with us, we're glad that you're here. We hope that you'll come back and any opportunity you may have. Just a few announcements for the congregation tonight. We extend our sympathy to Ron Johnson and the death of his brother, William Johnson, on Tuesday. No arrangements are available at this time. If you would like to contribute to a wedding gift card for Andrew Moss and Francie Puglia, please give your money to Amanda Hoffmeister or Gina Key by May 15th. Andrew is the son of Russell and Lucinda Moss. The annual graduation banquet will be this coming Sunday night, May 15th, after our evening service. Food will be pr provided. Please bring a dessert and join us as we honor our graduates. Ladies, please check the ladies' bulletin board for details about your activity, May 17th. Young professionals, please check the bulletin board for details about your game night, May 20th. Last to leaders, Remember the meeting down front after service for anyone in K-2 through second grade who would like more information on the last leaders program. School supply items for May 3rd are three ring binders, one inch, two inch, or three inch. And uh, this was given to me before the Devo started. Jimmy G needs a ride to Nashville tomorrow at 7 a.m. If you're able to help him with that, would you please let him, or uh, Don was the one that gave it to me, so maybe let him know and he can get in contact with Jimmy or you guys can work that out however you need to. Please check your handout and bulletin this week for information on current and future events and other items of interest. Please stand for our closing prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given to us. We thank you for this opportunity to come and to worship you and to learn more about you, to grow closer to you. Uh, we pray that you'll be with all those who have lost loved ones. Comfort them in the only way that you know how, Father. Uh, be with all those on the sick list. And most of all, Father, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for all our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.